All right. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Perfect. Okay, Catherine. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Oh, yeah. Finally, I was. I'm so happy that we started. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, uh, it was such a surprise because actually it took me a while to look at our chat and the last report which I wrote, you know, to follow your case and back on track because I was totally forgot. Um, you know, it, I think it's been like one month or something, if I don't be wrong. Is that true? Yeah, one, 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 yeah, 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 one and a half, I think, because I left from uh, Estonia and then I had like crazy month and it wasn't time to focus on uh, lessons and I decided to just wait the right time and now yeah. it is. <laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, that's a great thing that you could just put it all together and come back here. And that's so great to see you, actually. So, Catherine, tell me a little bit about yourself. I mean, how is life with you? I just want to start with a little bit of casual conversation, if you mind. Yeah, as uh, I think you forgot about our last conversation and everything. So I will explain what I'm doing. I'm a nutritionist and health coach. And I'm working with the people, helping them to lose the weight, to recover health and all this stuff let's say health industry so and i'm what else i'm doing and now i need uh, to improve my english because uh, i want to go to english speaking market because i've been mm -hmm. speaking uh, i've been working and speaking only with russian clients mm -hmm. and now i have several requests from English speaking people and I started to cooperate with them but I still feel not so comfortable not so confident so I have to improve it and um, yeah one of my goals is to go to focus only on English speaking audience that's why I need to improve my English so what else about myself so all my life is about my career about my profession now I have this time when I'm building up my life and uh, yeah, I'm living in Estonia, traveling a lot, and that's it shortly. Okay, that that's. And I have mistakes with my grammar, and my vocabulary is super small. Okay, I mean, um, I understood. Uh, so we need mostly vocabulary type of you know working. Actually, I already prepared a kind of casual class to to get us into more conversational and also some vocabulary type for today. So, okay, thank you very much. Actually, I remember you said I'm a health coach. You, you didn't have to tell me again. Yeah, I, I, I don't forget people like that. Yeah, I just didn't know exactly how was the best way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, but, you know, actually, I forgot the details mostly, you know, because, you know, mm -hmm. just a couple of weeks maximum can stay and then rush work and rush hour, Normal. you know. Okay, as you can see, Catherine, today we have, uh, okay, let's start. This is the first session, and you book twice a week. Actually, it's a just very nice idea to do it twice a week. We can do once a week on mostly a little bit more verbal and conversational type of skills. The other one, we get into the words, let you to, to just learn some words and then work on it with the homework. As you said, definitely, I will add some homework at the end. Let's say the task is better. The more like recording mm -hmm. homeworks, okay? Yeah, All right. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's start from here. So that she's easy on the eyes. Um, as you can see, mm -hmm. it's mostly like idioms, and we are going to work on idioms today. But a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's work on your pronunciation. Let's see that what small pick we can get from up from your pronunciation here. So could you please read this one for me? from here, which says mm -hmm. idioms. Mm, idioms are great for making speeches and writing more colorfully. They're more vivid and brief that, than using a long explanations. Sometimes they can also be quite interesting. That's right. So I can see that. I mean, um, Catherine, do you use idioms a lot in your own language when you speak? Uh, well, in Russian, uh, maybe, maybe yes, but not that much. Not that mm -hmm. much. But I mean, we in our in 
Russian language, we don't have it very, like, it's not common to say idioms. I know that um, in English it's more uh, used to. So. Well, I understand that now. Uh, you know, actually, every language has something that we call that key to the heart. Let me explain you a little bit about that. What is the key to the heart? Catherine, key to the heart, actually, because you work as, let's say, presenter. At the same time, you are in a work of entrepreneur. That means you bring people mm -hmm. inside your business. You invite them to come and follow you. And then you mm -hmm. will be the leader, all right? So since your, your job is somehow requires people's attention, also people's trust, you know, to, because they want to, of course, have a goal, you know, to work with you. Okay. So there is one simple thing as all the time helps them just as 20% of language. We call that idioms and informal language. Why informal language mm -hmm. and idioms are important? Because they are the other side of language, make it very sweet, make it very soft, you know, mm -hmm. for people to listen to you. So today we are going mm -hmm. to work on those so-called soft idioms then we expand it by ourselves this is just how we could do that so let's start with the first one first we always go for vocabulary to learn the core so let's start with the first one okay is architecture what is it architecture mm -hmm. what is it like architecture buildings <laughs> ah buildings okay so Think about that, Catherine. You are my teacher and I'm your student. And I ask you, Catherine, mm -hmm. what is architecture, by the way? Well, architecture is... Um, I can't, like, it's building. What else is it? It's the building which is made in some details or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, that's right. So when you go on the street, mm -hmm. when you go on the street, so mm -hmm. you see different buildings, uh, yeah, you like them, so you can see there are lot, there's lots of details and stuff. So they, this is the architecture. <laughs> yeah, could be that definitely. Yeah. Um, you you mentioned architecture as the building. Let's let's go and read this one. Okay, just read this one. What is architecture? And the style in which buildings are made. Yeah, you yeah. know, actually, your focus was on building here. Okay, so I emphasize this one. Mm -hmm. While the core is here. Actually, architecture is not just building. Is the style mm -hmm. that we make any type of, you know, just like, let's say, constructions. It could be bridge. It mm -hmm. could be buildings. It could be apartments. Or even it could be just like bungalows mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. they have a style and we follow this style by architecture. OK, the first thing that today we are going to learn, Catherine, is how to paraphrase. Let me add this word to you. What is paraphrase? Paraphrase, that means how many possible way you can explain a topic. Why it is important? Because it helps you to expand at the same time, use your language more. You know, just let's like a teacher. Think that mm -hmm. you are a teacher, okay? Your students mm -hmm. sometimes say, teacher, just apartment, and then you are going to expand mm -hmm. it, okay? And just like that. So, mm -hmm. okay, how we can define, how we can paraphrase? Catherine, very simple. We have two things in every definition, two things. One is core, and the next thing is detail, okay? Just remember, mm -hmm. details and cores. And also, details are relevance. That means they are relevant to this core. That means we cannot say architecture is a style of eating because it's not relevant. Mm -hmm. Okay, So we say style mm -hmm. of buildings, mm -hmm. you know? So remember, mm -hmm. we rarely change the core in paraphrasing. We rarely change it. We don't need to change it. You keep the core. And then you change the details. Instead, we mm -hmm. change the details. Okay. All right. Let's try it. The first one, I do it. The next word, you do it. 
So let me start with the first. Okay. So you told me architecture. I said, hmm, let me think. Okay, so I say style. Okay, I bring some other words to make it a little bit more artistic. I say style or the art or science of building specifically. Okay, you can see that here. My core is preserved. Style, the art, or science. Mm -hmm. Or I can even make mm -hmm. this one into the, you know, come on type of thing. Just like this. Okay. Style, the art, or science of building specifically is architecture. So you can see that mm -hmm. these two sentences are dramatically different in detail, but they are somehow, in, in the number of words we use, they are totally different. So let's go with the second one, mm -hmm. okay? Let's go with the second one and let's mm -hmm. check. All right. Lawyer. Is it a lawyer, right? The person who dealing with the document? Barrister. Yeah. Exactly. So the, the word, so, the barrister, barrister. Hmm? the barrister. Mm -hmm. So, who is a barrister? Is a type Barry. of lawyer. Hmm. Now, a barrister is. Mm -hmm. um, I'm listening. I don't know. Okay. So, barrister. Uh, specific, uh, a specific uh, lawyer, like the yeah. specification of a lawyer sure sure they are okay for that i want to act like a person that understands your language a bit okay i want to just act like that just like you know i know something you know so i can just act like that so let's go here and uh let me see yeah so i put barrister here and then it comes like this one i hope this is the one that you know in your own language. So, mm -hmm. is it different from lawyers? Just, Catherine. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh huh. That's it. That's the kick. <laughs> so, how are you going to explain that? Mm. Mm. Moving Bar fingers. <laughs> <I'm> thinking. <laughs> All right. I can help you. So, a bit. probably, yeah, help me. Okay, sure. First of all, barrister is a person or is a role? I think it's a person. Thank you. A person called. So then we bring this word inside it for paraphrasing. Okay. A person called barrister. Okay. And what does this person really do? Mm, protect their clients. Oh, their clients. wow. That's great. Give me something. That's right. Protects their clients. Okay, that's good, Catherine. You did a great job. That was the first thing I needed. So good. I need I need this braveness to to create, you know? Mm -hmm. I need this braveness because you know, Catherine, you have amazing potential here. You just need to use it right now and help your brain create in English, like a new product, okay? Because mm -hmm. you are in Russian, mm -hmm. you are a queen. You know everything. You know, and we know it. So we need to just, you know, transfer those information into the other language. So actually, you need sometimes for specific type of job, a little bit have the like research, you know, how this research going to happen? Mm -hmm. Just fast research. Oh, there is a little different. Barrister practices an advocate, but where? In the higher court. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. It doesn't go for some family issues. 
You know, it goes for mm-hmm. presidential issues. It goes for political issues, the parliament issues, corruption, something like that issues, mm-hmm. you know, and then they go with mm-hmm. the barrister. This is not just a person like mm-hmm. a lawyer, you know, you got that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. okay. These are my given information that I show that with pink because I believe it's your favorite color. I don't know. You wore that today. Thought. Just, just guessing. I don't know. So now you use my given words and make sentence with, you know, you can continue this one. You can continue your own sentence. A person called barrister. Uh, working in a higher court. Or a person called barrister is an advocate who working in a higher court. Okay, so I write it here. Who is... So he's an advocate who working in higher court. Okay, don't worry about me. I'm fine. I just made some space for you to see the whole sentence. So yeah, um, that was great. That was perfect. Just a little thing you should pay attention. After, you know, we say advocate and you are telling me a fact, it is better to use simple present tense. You know, just like simply said, who works in higher court, you know, mm-hmm. then you make mm-hmm. it more like fact. Okay, because this is fact, okay? Mm -hmm. So, in simply, I write Mm -hmm. here, present simple, okay, is the the language of the facts. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. So, okay, Catherine, for the one last time. So, who is a barrister, Mm -hmm. Catherine? Enlighten me, please. So the barrister is an advocate who working with the uh, how to say that uh, higher dealing with huh? the, uh, the higher courts. Higher court. This you mean? You wanted me just repeat? I wanted to say more. <laughs> no, you can say. Come on, so, you make me happy uh, if you say more. So the, bar- so the barrister is an advocate who works uh on higher court exactly in higher court okay thank you catherine you just act like one of those dictionaries that i you know i see it on youtube guys do you know about what barrister is it works on a higher court (laughs) just like that so please subscribe on my page you know for more information you know they all the time (laughs) ask people to subscribe did you see that (laughs) so yes okay now we try it on the next one. Let's go with the next word. Actually, this word is very interesting and some people don't know even about it. They say, okay, what is the pilfer? You're joking. Uh, so, all right, Catherine, you tell me about pilfer. What is it? First read the main one, then I ask you to paraphrase it. Pilfer to steal things of small value. Mm-hmm. Is it physical thing? It's a verb, actually. You know, mm-hmm. pilfer is a verb. You know, like someone pilfered a small watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, or someone pilfered mm-hmm. an apple. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to explain me with another way, how would how would you do that? I mean, tell me about that pilfer. Pilfer is to to steal or take Mm -hmm. small things. (laughs) Yeah, it's good. It's good. Steal (laughs) or take. Take is good. So steal is illegal. But okay, some small things. (laughs) The the worst part is I take something, but you 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 didn't allow me. Take without uh, 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 permission. <laughs> yes, of course. To to take it without permission. Yeah. Okay. So steal or take some small things. Yeah, that's right. Excuse me, Catherine. You said very nice thing. 
you said a small thing, and you just made me a little bit, you know, just curious about that. As you know, one of the interesting things that is also small is I'm going to show you here because if I say it, you don't believe me. Is this one diamond? Yeah. Do you think, Catherine, if I just uh, go to a place and just, as you said, take one diamond without permission, am I a someone they called Fred Pilford Diamond? <laughs> <laughs> no, then a Pilford is to steal cheap things. Oh, wow. That's it. You found the heart. And you just hit it with your arrow. It worked. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Cheap. You know, it must be cheap. Like one of those diamonds you can buy from the Wish. <laughs> well, you know Wish.com? Yeah, the Chinese website. You can buy yeah. <laughs> There's a Chinese website. They have anything. You know, uh, they have, for example, mm. diamond ring. You know, you can buy diamond ring, but it's not diamond. It's just glass. The polished glass, you know. <laughs> yeah, if someone someone took it without permission, definitely pill for that because it's just one dollar. Yeah, yeah, that's that. Mm -hmm. God knows how many people got fooled by that diamond. Yeah, fortunately not me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, okay, Catherine, very nice. Actually, that was true. Remember, the the thing that we are talking is not the size, but is the value. When the value is so mm -hmm. you know just small. We just say cheap things. This is the guy pilfered it. But Catherine, why you never heard this word before? What do you think? What is the reason? Explain, please. Because I'm not a bar, not an advocate. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. I, I <laughs> that because it's not used. I think uh, we don't use it very often. This word pilfer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, not surrounded by you first. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're actually we're surrounded by giant pilferers. They don't care. They steal big things from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. Uh, so, as you can see, there is one way, Catherine, to research over the words that we learn. Okay. Remember, for some words, mm -hmm. there is use over time. Okay, just like this, use over time for pilfer. As you can see, the first time it was very common in 1800. Then it got less and less common until 2019 by virally, you know, when we got some series or movies like, let's say, Lord of Rings or, uh, I don't know, some Vikings movies or some other series, you know, on Netflix. People start using it again, you know. So mm -hmm. it used to be just a history, but right now people made it again revived because we can see in 2019, it has some positive type of, you know, usage among the people. So that means if you say it, some people understand easily what you're talking about. And some people use it actually in daily talking. So yeah, actually I didn't steal anything. It was just a pilfer, you know, just like that. So. In that case, that means robbing some small things, okay? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, this is how, oh, by the way, maybe you ask, how can I have access to this information? You go to the Google, you just, uh, you know, write pilfer meaning, okay? So you write pilfer and mm -hmm. then you write meaning and then you see the word and if you, ex uh, yeah, let me just show you here. Yeah, if you expand your word, then you can see the information about usage, okay? Then it's the best part that you can make sure that how to use it. Okay. So let's can go. Give me more examples. From can you give me more examples where, yeah, where oh. where you can use it or only about this sentences that somebody took something and that's it. There is no any others like idioms or something for me. Actually, we are going to get the idiom about it. This is just preparation, uh. you know, just just uh. preparation, but. Uh, yeah, definitely, you know, just definitely we can find a lot of, uh, you know, words and sentences. I can give you some if you want. Um, for example, the first thing I can say is, let me think. Mm. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay, for example, I can say Sasha, let's say a name, Sasha had a terrible life. So like this, Sasha had a terrible life since um, like since she pilfered she pilfered countless things from countless people mm -hmm. you know actually Catherine is one of the people's hobby sometimes it's not about money it's about their hobby you know they go to the store they pick something and put it in their pocket and they come home and then make a some kind of you know collection with them so mm -hmm. Sasha had a terrible life mm -hmm. since she pilfered countless items from countless people. You know, just like that. So you can see that mm -hmm. mostly is about stealing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So continue with the next one. Now I want you to see the next one, which is a little bit American one, juggernaut. So I don't want you to explain it because it's yeah. a noun. So what is the juggernaut? Mm -hmm. Juggernaut. Juggernaut, mm -hmm. is right? Yeah, juggernaut. Juggernaut. A very large, heavy truck. Truck, it means on the car, like, or... Yeah, yeah, big car. Ah, okay. Okay. You know, actually... Now I have to... Mm -hmm. You know, actually, why they call it juggernaut? Because this is a special kind of truck. In this shape. They are expensive, uh, kind of classy, you know, <laughs> some, some people, they invest their whole life for that and they have a juggernaut. It's not a truck. You know, truck is something just normal. You can see a truck, which is ordinary. It takes things from one place to another. When you see a juggernaut, it is beautiful. I mean, according to the design and shape, you know, that's why people, you know, just somehow Sometimes they show off with that. I have a beautiful juggernaut. You should see that. You know, just like this one. No, mm -hmm. totally the special kind of truck, mostly United States. You can see it sometimes road to road. They have this juggernaut. They're very, you know, just type of strong type of trucks, you know. And mm -hmm. when they move near you, the earth will shake, you know, because they have a lot of power in the wheels. Actually, they use juggernaut as some kind of idiom. Sometimes when they say, today, I feel like a juggernaut. It means I feel like I have a lot of power. Uh, so, Catherine, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Which days you feel you feel like a juggernaut during the week? Monday. Mondays. Oh, what is the secret of Monday? Tell me about it. <laughs> to have a good relax on the weekends. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> of course. What, how did I just think, didn't think about it? Sorry. So, uh, what do you do when you feel like juggernaut? Okay, when I feel like juggernaut, the first thing I do, I call people and make them happy because this is what I do. What do you do when you feel like juggernaut? Then I uh, sit with and build something new, some new projects, or I'm working on my projects. So, I put my energy, my juggernaut energy, I put to my business. Oh, I see. So you put your juggernaut energy. Wow, you made a word right now. I put my juggernaut energy in. I put it in my work. Wow, that's great. That's great, Catherine. I already came to your world. I understand that. Remember, Catherine, one good thing is to create your own words because the words are already there. But it needs people to make them make sense, okay? And if you help people to mm -hmm. understand your words, then you become a cool girl. Suddenly, you say, wow, this girl is so cool. She says, I have a juggernaut type of power. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's go here and talk about uh, easy part. We don't want to talk about identification, but we want to go here with the last word for today. Auditor. Auditor. Right. Auditor. So... Uh Auditor. Someone who examines and creates a rapport. Oh, my favorite person. <laughs> really? I hate account. I hate accounting and reports and everything. Oh, you hate. So it's good when. You... Oh, I see. So because you hate it, you like someone does it for you. 
Yeah. What part of it, Catherine, you don't like it? What part of counting is not interesting for you? I'm bad with math. Oh, with math. Oh, I see. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, you know, I used to be a math teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah you're right. Right. everything is you can imagine me in a class with I don't know ten students with I'm and just telling them about math and nobody listen to me. Please everybody, oh this one is oh hey you <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah, that's why I quit it. I said I'm not a math teacher anymore. I want to be some some other teacher. <laughs> so yeah. Uh so let's go here and that's right. So now I want you okay, if you know the auditor. I want you to paraphrase it. Let's see how well you can do that. You know, there's the someone who examines accounts and create reports. So, is there any other way to say it? Uh, it's it's a person who taking care about the finances in a company. Okay. Okay. So let me just write it down. So you said a person. Uh, who taking care of financial, you mean financial, financial what of the company? Mm -hmm. Part, like financial part of company. Of a company. Or who, who control, who controls financial part. Financial parts, okay, just wait, financial parts. Hmm. So a person who controls the financial parts. Okay, control, taking care. Yes, this one I love. Taking care of financial part of a company. I love this one. The second one controls, not that one. Maybe, maybe in Russian, control has this you know, ability to be joined to, a, to an auditor. Mm -hmm. But in English, actually, uh, mm -hmm. We don't use that control because control is a person, first of all, used by hand or mind. And then there is a second mm -hmm. person that does something, you know, just you can control your future. Mm -hmm. you know, just like that. And then future works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Catherine, do you believe mm -hmm. you can control your future? No. <laughs> I mean, you can settle your goals and move, mm -hmm. but okay. you cannot control it. All right. Mm -hmm. So, very nice. Why? Why do you think it's impossible? I think because still going to happen things which you cannot uh, expect. And if you try to control everything, then you get uh, getting uh, overstressed. Now you are, you are a good and great health coach because I really understand this. <laughs> yeah, of course, things happen without any, you know, expectation. They're just like, this one happens and we are just, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Very nice. Great. Um, uh, do you know David Lynch, Catherine? No. no. David Lynch is a director, movie maker, okay? That his movies are very famous for unexpected events inside it. Just like what you said. Things mm -hmm. happen like this one, as he said, all the time. You don't know. No, it's like comes. Okay. So, very nice. Uh, Catherine, you are a fast learner. Exactly, you found key to the heart. You found how to use the core and just expand it in a sentence. Uh, we need to be better at this by working more and help you to add more vocabulary, you know, just like colorful, you know, just like you have color pencil like this. So we need to just put more mm -hmm. colors, you know, and then you will be so much better. And it helps your self-confidence because you feel like a teacher and you are actually. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go here and we start with our first idiom of today. So, okay, what is the idiom? Could you please read it for me? A fresh pair of eyes. A fresh pair of eyes. Yeah, of course. Fresh pair of eyes. Okay, and what is it? Uh, sorry, maybe who is it? Uh, it's a person who is brought in to examine something carefully. 
examine, examine. What means examine? examine? Examine. How to pronounce it? Examine. Examine. Oh, who is mm -hmm. brought in to examine something carefully? That's right. A person who is brought in to examine something carefully. That's right. Okay, don't worry. We go to the example here. There is an example for a fresh pair of eyes. Let's read it and we might understand what, you know, going to be that. The team couldn't find a solution to the architectural problem, so they brought in a fresh pair of eyes. That's right. You know, that means a fresh pair of eyes. That means a new perspective, a new person that mm -hmm. come outside of your team and actually has a lot of beautiful mm -hmm. ideas. That person is a mm -hmm. fresh pair of eyes. Sometimes it could happen even in small mm -hmm. family type of, you know, conversation. For example, me and my sister, we had problem for a long time and we couldn't actually get any solution. Suddenly, my grandpa came to the door and said, you shut up and you shut up. You don't know how to talk to each other. And I said, oh, wow, a fresh pair of eyes is here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so this is the way the fresh pair of eyes you know, work. Sometimes they enter, they see all new. They've never been involved, but they come and check carefully what you've done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have a question, Catherine. Uh, let's make it this one. So you understand that a fresh pair of eyes, in fact, is a person. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Catherine, do you need a fresh pair of eyes about some cases that you consult about the health issues? Yes, I need some. I need someone to help me to build my group. Oh. oh, I see. And uh, what features and characteristics that guy need to have to be a fresh pair of eyes. For example, if I bring a person as a fresh pair of eyes, so I start like this. If I bring a person as a fresh pair of eyes, that person must be, and okay, now you tell me about it. Must be creative. Mm -hmm. And uh, must be uh, must work. He, he or she must work in health industry mm -hmm. or at least coaching. Don't worry, I save myself right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, want to. okay. Mm -hmm. that's great. That's great. First of all, I need to introduce you a word that you all the time run away from. Yeah, you don't say this word. So, <laughs> yeah, this is the word that you don't use it. And that is relevant. Okay. Instead of saying that for example, has education in the field that I am currently in, you can say related or relevant field of study, relevant industry. Relevant is so great word because it can connect and joins many other words together by one way. This is the path of getting my area, you know, so you say relevant. Mm -hmm. For me, relevant field of study is teaching, education, I don't know, TESOL, something like that. For you, the relevant field of study is? Health. Mm -hmm. I mean, health, nutrition, mm -hmm. badging as well. Dietitians, nutritionists, okay, okay, that's great. That's mm -hmm. great, I see. Okay. So, Catherine, I understood. A fresh pair of eyes. Good for you. All right. Let's go with the second one. Okay. By the... Hmm, what's going on here? By the skin of your teeth. To, to just manage to do something and come very close to failing. Yes. Catherine, have you imagined always that the last scene of some movies. 
Mm-mm. Okay. You know, just remember the hero comes out of the building. Okay. And then one mm-hmm. thing happens. Um, I didn't find any pictures, so I just use any pictures I found in the internet. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the movies happen a lot, right? I mean, exactly the mm-hmm. bomb explodes the time that people go out. I don't know why. The bomb is mm-hmm. stupid. You know, it's the way. Okay, go out, go out, go out. Okay, I'm now exploding. So, yeah, you know, just like that. This is the time that we say, you know, my dad always had this one. Said, oh, they saved their life by the skin of the teeth. You know, it's like this one. I mean, by the skin of mm. the teeth is not necessarily your teeth. You can change this your to any other pronouns. Like, even you can make it de. You know, it's not necessary to always say your. You're mm-hmm. going to say there. Or even you can mm-hmm. say her, you know. She just mm-hmm. escaped by the skin of her te- teeth, you know, just like that. That was so close that she could mm-hmm. die, you know, just like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's go here. And I and I will talk about it ironically as well. Okay, right now is just straight meaning. So let's go here. Dave. Dave passed his barrister exam by the skin of his teeth because he didn't do any studying. That's right. Okay. You can see that. Here. It's like luckiness. Like something lucky. Exactly. That he been super lucky that he didn't prepare me. Okay. Yeah, actually, mm-hmm. you know, the, the main thing that you can see that he was so close to, to lose it, to fail it, to miss it. You know, that's mm-hmm. the main concept mm-hmm. of that. So, Catherine, I have done many things, and I have succeeded many things by the skin of my teeth. Trust me, it happened for me a lot. Hmm, yeah. So. Me too. <laughs> oh, really? I, I'm really interested to know one of those stories. Come on, tell me something. No, for example, the same. Uh, I passed uh, my math exam by the skin of, of my teeth. <laughs> Amazing sentence, amazing <laughs> sentence, so good, so good. You know, Catherine, when you use idiom, you cannot stop people from laughing. This is the art of the idiom, because in, 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 in English culture, it has funny meaning. At the same time, it's so deep that when you use that, for example, instead of saying, I hardly passed my exam, especially the math exam, you know, and people are looking at you mm-hmm. very seriously, you know, but you say the same sentence like, you know, I passed the exam by the skin of my teeth. And then people say, oh, really? Oh, you know, and they start laughing because in in our f- culture, it has very interesting and hilarious feeling. You know, you are giving me some signals and these signals are funny, you know, and then key, mm-hmm. key to the heart Pew! again, you know, just happened. Mm-hmm. So, um, okay. I think it's is easy and clear, right? Not confusing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. No. I'm so sorry about your math exactly. You know, you said skin of your teeth, you just passed it. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine your face that time. You know, you came out the you know the exam hall and said, No way, no way, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hmm. Ah, this one is my favorite. This one is my favorite. Bad blood. What's going on with the bad blood? Bad blood when people feel hate because of things that happened in the past. Oh, yeah, that's my thing. <laughs> that's what I told you. So how we use it? We always say there is a bad blood. Okay. And there is bad blood like this. So let's read this one to understand the uh-huh. sentence. Uh, there is a there is bad blood between Jim and his co-workers because they found out that he was pilfering the pilfering from them. Yeah, see that? Mm-hmm. He was pilfering from, he was stealing from, he was robbing from them, you know? So he was pilfering okay. from them. <laughs> so there is bad blood between them. Actually, there is a bad blood between me and my, uh, yeah, with my, with my ex-partner because he thought I was hiding something from him, but it was totally a lie. Never hide anything in our business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you tell me, uh, have you ever had bad blood with, with between yourself, you and someone? 
Is there a bad blood? Think. Oh, you're thinking. You are that clean person. No yeah. bad blood. Hmm. <laughs> no, should be something. <laughs> should be, right? I don't know if you have friendship, bad blood. We have many types of bad blood. Friendship, bad blood. We have partnership, bad blood. Family, bad blood, which is very common. You know, maybe some uncle or some cousins. You had some history with them. And right now there is bad blood between them and you. You know, it could be like that. Uh, there is a bad blood between me and uh, my aunt mm -hmm. because I found out that she been lying to me. So that means that still you couldn't forgive her, and still there is some issues between you, right? Yeah, probably. It, it, probably, okay. So that means you never tried. You, you don't even know. Okay. So <laughs> why you say probably? Come on, Catherine. Don't say probably. I mean, you didn't call her and she didn't call you. So you still have hope. Probably, <laughs> maybe. Hmm. <laughs> so, all right. All right. I understand. Um, as you can see, bad blood is something, the issue that still exists, you know, because of some history is like mm -hmm. that. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, easy. But I have a question, Catherine, as a, as a health coach, do you think it's possible that always, let's say, dealing with a lot of past issues and bad blood could make a person ill? Absolutely. It's the cause of chronic diseases. Ah, oh, very nice. This is the cause of the chronic disease because of... I mean, if we think about bad blood i can say that example that i have a client uh, with a chronic disease because she has a bad blood bad blood uh, how to okay bad blood bad blood after okay. divorce hmm? uh, like divorcing or something mm -hmm. oh after getting divorce after getting divorce mm -hmm. she still feel the bad blood between herself and the ex-husband. Mm -hmm. hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I understand right now. I understand right now. So yeah, of course, bad blood is one cause of stucking in the past. That means you cannot, first of all, you cannot forgive yourself. You don't need to forgive anyone. And you have, and you have it inside and it's affecting your health. Mm -hmm. I totally understand right now that how it works. The chronic disease as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay great so Catherine uh, for today we pause here because I want to hear something from you actually mm -hmm. I never been with you in any classes and I'm getting no I'm getting to know you you know I'm getting in that level to understand what makes you satisfied mm -hmm. what makes you happy what makes you curious and what makes you enthusiastic to know Okay, but it's very important mm -hmm. for me. You tell me, how do you feel about this class today? I feel good. I feel uh, it's interesting for me. And uh, for me, it's very important what you realize is to have an example and just say, for example, this bad blood. It's nice if I can give many examples, then I really realize it. And then I will keep it in my mind to use it in, the, in life. So. Yeah, but I like everything, and uh, I remember the word juggernaut power. Juggernaut, juggernaut power. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's great. It's great. Um, so remember, um, I'm going to give you some tasks till tomorrow. Okay, that mm -hmm. these are the mm -hmm. audio recording or video recording tasks that you can tell me about. Mostly mm -hmm. some words mm -hmm. I give you or some pictures. And after the pictures, I want you to explain what did you see and exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And do you think what happened exactly? What was the cause? I want you to actually analyze the thing that you see. Because remember, mm -hmm. Catherine, mm -hmm. the education shouldn't be paid all the time. Shouldn't be, should be done, you know, all the time. That means when you pay for this class, I, I have to provide you something that you could do yourself, you know, to help me 
to mm -hmm. see you more prepared next time, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's great. Okay. So, Catherine, do you have any questions? Perfect. No, I will take the task then. Okay, so today, just very fast conclusion, I'm going to tell you. The first thing that we learned today, mm -hmm. that was the architecture. Actually, we didn't mean to learn that. We just meant to learn how to paraphrase the words from architecture. We learned that the core always stay the same, but details can be changed. Like style, the art, or science of building specifically is architecture. Then we understood that present simple is the language of the facts. The facts that we say mostly happen in present simple. Then we talk, talked about the barrister. Mm -hmm. We said the barrister is a person who actually works in the higher courts, not just normal thing. And mm -hmm. then we learn about pilfer, that we understood pilfer is just linked with cheap things. It must be cheap in value. It's not about small or big. Mm -hmm. And uh, we learn about juggernaut. We learn about juggernaut is something so big like a heavy truck with mm -hmm. very classy one. And also we learn about the auditor, which a person that examines the accounts and creates report, which you said, I hate it. I hate math. So, mm -hmm. and finally, we learn three new idioms, like a fresh pair of eyes. You said you needed someone in your field of study, relevant field of study. Mm -hmm. And also, we learn mm -hmm. about by the skin of the teeth. Simply means mm -hmm. failing, 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 but not. Just like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the last one is just, I mean, we didn't learn anything else, right? Yeah, okay. All right, Catherine. Yeah. The good mm -hmm. news is I recorded this class and I will send it to you after this. So it will be mm -hmm. accessible from this class in, or if you like it, I can send your email. Which one do you think is better for you? No, you can send it here. That's fine. Okay, that's great. That's great. Works for me. Okay, Catherine, any other questions? No, no. Perfect. Thank you so much for the lesson. Oh, thank you very much for being so cooperative. You were amazing today. Just the only problem I seen that was a little bit of, you know, it's like ice breaking. You need a little bit ice breaking type of thing. <laughs> yes. I, I need the time and this kind of person I have to, you know, look at and third lesson will be fine. Third lesson. Even you just planned that second lesson, you're going to be ice breaking. <laughs> okay. You are really very smart. You are getting me into the trouble right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay, Catherine, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Can't wait to see you soon. Bye-bye. See you Friday. Bye. Bye-bye.